How's it going everyone? Mitch here with another Logic Pro 10 tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about track stacks and parallel compression. I'm going to be giving you a high level overview of what's going to be going on and then we're going to dive into Logic so that we can do this and uh, see exactly what we have talked about here in this section. So first, track stacks. This is what is going to be the view when you create a track stack in your range window or in your track window. You're going to have a group of tracks, one through n, could be any number, and it, there's a main track which we can expand and collapse. And this is going to be our track stack, right? So this is the main view of it. Now if we go in depth a little bit more, look into the mixture of how this is actually happening, we can see that these tracks, 1 through n, are being bussed into an auxiliary track called that main track. So what's just happening here is Logic is formatting this view into a track stack in the arrange window or in the track window. So this is what's going on in the mixer. It's just bussing via the output of these tracks into the main track, auxiliary track. Uh, so that's what's going on. Now if we look at parallel compression, we have a high compression channel and a master compression or a master channel which has no compression on it and this is what parallel compression is uh, and if you don't know what this what's going on here with parallel compression I do have a video in Logic Pro 9 but it still applies so go check that out if you want to learn but the synopsis is you are mixing this highly compressed channel with the master channel you're bringing out some of the subtleties in the tracks that you are parallel compressing and you are also making it a little bit thicker and which is just the the, the main goal of parallel compression, right? So uh, we find this happening and we, we're going to be using this on drums, we're going to be using this on, on guitars, vocals. Uh, you can basically make a case to use parallel compression on a very wide group of instruments. Uh, so that's basically the synopsis there of that. But what we're going to be doing here is creating another route for this audio to go. Uh, so, as you can see, we already have one route built via our track stacks, and this main track is going to double as our master track for our parallel compression. And then our compression track is going to be, we're going to be creating that auxiliary track, and what we're going to be, we're going to be creating that by using an effects bus. And uh, we're going we're gonna to dive into logic here and make sure that we know how to do that. All right, so now as we dive into logic, one quick thing to note is that parallel compression is great for rhythmic tracks. Guitar sometimes is rhythmic, drums, vocals, stuff like that. Uh, so when I'm going to be diving in and parallel compressing these guitars, this might not be the perfect track to get that rhythmic nature out of, uh, but it's going to be a good example for us. So this is what the track sounds like before anything is done to it. All right, so what we're going to be doing is first creating a track stack. So one, click one track and shift click the rest of them. Right click, create a track stack. I'm going to be creating a summing track. Make sure it's a summing track stack. Um, and then we're renaming it guitars here. All right, so track stack is created. Now if we go into the mixer and look at what's going on, we will see that uh, the output of our guitar tracks is bus 3, whereas our guitar track that we that was automatically created for us, this is going to be an auxiliary track, as you can see it's an aux channel, uh, is going to have an input of bus 3. So that's what's going on here, and that's kind of, that that's portraying uh, what I was showing you in the behind the scenes slide of the first part. So now what we're going to be wanting to do is create an offshoot. We're going to be creating another route for this volume to go. As you can see, there's already bus 1 and bus 2 on all of these tracks. And uh, so one, the bus 1 is going to be the delay and bus 2 is going to be the reverb. So just keep that in mind. I'm not going to be parallel compressing either the delay or the reverb with the original signal. So, uh, so first things first, we're going to be creating a, another bus. So select uh, bus 4, say. Uh, make sure to turn the sends dial up to zero decibels or 100% of your original signal. Uh, uh, nope, nope, no, no, nope, 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 mm -mm, nope, nope. Mm -mm. All right, there we are. Uh, and then I'm going to also make sure to select a pre fader. And I'm going to select pre fader because I want this to be independent of anything that these tracks have going on. It's going to grab the uh, audio that these tracks have before anything is applied to it. Any of the, sorry, all the plugins are going to be applied to it, just not the fader or the panning. So I'm going to be busting that out before either of those things happen. So now, if we go to our auxiliary four track, which I'm going to rename here, guitar compression. 
name it like that, uh, we can see that if I play the track, it's going to be significantly louder because we have another offshoot. We have uh, two parallel channels, this guitar auxiliary track and this guitar compression track. So I'm going to actually take both of these and lower them. And uh, now if I play with this guitar compression track, It's going to be independent of our guitar track over here. And that is because, like I've said, we use the pre-fader um, on our auxiliary send or our bus sends. So now that we have two channels, we want to put uh, compression on this compression channel. So I'm going to select our dynamics and then compression. All right. And so I'm going to be using for this tutorial, I'm going to be using a um, no, not a default. We're going to be using the Vintage FET. Um, and then I'm going to uh, make sure, I mean, you're going to be wanting to play with this a little bit more than I'm going to right now. But I'm going to have the attack down a little bit. The release looks a little bit fine. Your ratio is going to be is going to need to be pretty high because you're going to need to get a lot of compression out of this. I'm going to select the auto gain off so that I can set that in the end. And then the compressor threshold, we're going to be trying to get around a gain reduction of around 13 to 15 decibels, which is a lot. So uh, let's just kind of play the track and see if we can get that now. So out the compression track as well. All right, and that's saying about 14 decibels. So I'm going to select 14 gain reduction or uh, gain boost here. So if I uh, turn on and off our compressor, let's see if the the compressor is a volume independent plugin. You can tell that there is no gain increase or decrease when I turn it on. So that's exactly what we want. And the compression is done. That's a very rudiment rudimentary amount of compression. I mean, what I'm doing there uh, was went, went very fast, but you're going to want to spend a little bit more time in there. So now we have two tracks, a highly compressed track and a main track. And we're going to want to be mixing these together so that we can create our parallel compression. And the amount of compression to the main is going to be totally dependent on you. Usually the normal track without any compression is going to be a higher volume than the original track or the highly compressed track. So let's uh, let's check that out right now. So as you can see, when I muted it at the end and then unmuted it, it just kind of adds a little bit of body, a little bit of thickness to the track that wasn't there originally. And that's what we we're going for. So that's how you combine track stacks and compression, parallel compression. So everyone, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments below or in a message. And just in general, comment, rate, subscribe. I got a freaking bounce, and I will be seeing you all very soon. Have a great day.